about this fucking show. Hey, what's up guys? It's me, Eddie, and Rent a Cringe Season 2 has finished airing. Woohoo! And uh Season 3 has already been announced, so whoop 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 de doo, I guess. Alright, I guess here goes. I know he didn't cover season 1 of Rent a Girlfriend, but that's because the show was so damn popular back then, I just decided not to review it even after watching it. Then again, I did cover Attack on Titan in a subpar fashion, so uh... Well, it might have been due to the fact that I binged Rent a Girlfriend season 1 instead of watching it normally. Then again, I covered Astro Lost in Space, so uh... Oh gee, I mean there's a, there's a lot of anime as I watched that I didn't really review. Guess I'm just always, always a little selective about it. Anyhow, here I am with a review, and by review I mean a thorough roast of the show Rent a Girlfriend Season 2. Uh, to be frank, I think I feel like this this uh, video is gonna be far more of a wild ride than the other uh, all the other reviews I've done. So yeah, buckle up, cause uh, we're getting right into it there. Seriously, the better moments of this show are about as well written as a fucking soap opera. And I will be honest here, it really does give off old soap opera vibes, if I will be completely frank with you here. The story is a fucking soap opera. I I'm serious. But all that aside, we have a lot to cover today, so I'll get started on my little rambles. Let's get started, shall we? Obviously, spoilers up ahead, but do any of you guys even care at this point? I watch the anime and tend to watch season 3, and even I don't care about spoilers at this point, honestly. Side note, I will also include manga spoilers, because yes, I had someone spoil me on the plot, and I have no issue with that whatsoever. Alright, so let's get our cast out of the way, shall we? Firstly, we have Mizuhara, a massive Mary Sue. I thought she was pretty cool in Season 1, but after realizing just how stupid she was, I legitimately could not care about this girl until we got to the final episode of Season 2, and then I just realized how tragic it was that such a potentially interesting concept was being wasted on such a shit show. The thing is, we actually get a glimpse of this in see Episode 12, where we see Mizuhara's backstory, and like, before episode 11, I legitimately did not care for Mizuhara. Unlike all the ho other horny weebs who saw Kazuya and cringe while simping for Mizuhara, I saw Mizuhara for what she was, an indecisive girl who is as responsible for this whole situation as much as Kazuya himself. And the thing is, it was around episode 11 where Sumi is the focus, not Mizuhara, that legitimately got to care at first. I mean, admittedly, there is episode 12, and yes, like, her backstory, which did get me to care about Mizuhara as a whole. And that's when I realized that all the characters were really... Really interesting in concept, but it's fucking ragey, so yeah, don't expect him to actually execute that well. Secondly, we have Kazuya himself, one of the worst parts of this anime. Of course, I actually do have a counterpoint to this, which I will get into much later, but for now, let us be reminded that Kazuya is absolutely horrendous, and I despise him and everything about him. Well, alright, not really. I thought the fact that he was a fan of fish facts was pretty cool. You know that moment during Sumi's date, which I'll get to in a minute. Seriously though, as much as I want to roast Kazuya, Everything I bad I could say about him already basically has been said, so I won't. Actually, there is one thing I want to say, and that is, Kazuya, for the love of God, stop screaming. I will literally die of cringe if you scream like that in public again. Then again, I have to take a break while watching this like every five minutes to relieve my head of the absolute cringe of the show anyway, resulting in a 20 minute episode taking closer to 40, so I guess you screaming less isn't actually going to make that big of a difference. Kazuya's just a creep though, let's be honest here. I remember screaming at the screen in, in episode 1 asking why he was buying tickets to Mizuhara's play. God, that was so awful. I'm glad he didn't stand up and start cheering for Mizuhara in the middle of the play, interrupting the play, because honestly, I expected him to do that right there and then. Like, my heart was beating, beating that he didn't do something as cringy and embarrassing as that. I'm utterly serious here. I'm so glad Kazuya just sat down and enjoyed the play. But I've shit on Kazuya enough. Honestly, we should always keep in mind, and this is more of a season one thing, that Mizuhara brought this upon herself. We may hate on Kazuya for extending this cringe and artificial relationship, but Let's remember, Mizuhara was the one who went along with it when Kazuya was planning on dropping it the very first day. She came in and actively introduced herself as Kazuya's girlfriend to Kazuya's grandma, going along with the lie he had crafted. Look at this, this is absolutely disgraceful! Mizuhara may be a better character now, but it doesn't change the fact that she's still the one that initiated this entire deal. She's as much to blame for this entire deal, ordeal as Kazuya and his grandma. Annie, yeah, I'm getting sidetracked here. It still doesn't take away from the fact that knowing Chizuru's backstory has made her 100 times more likable. Seriously, they should have just cut the rental actress, a uh, rental girlfriend bit, and just made Chizuru a struggling uh, college-age actress. 
maybe Umi could have been like her love interest if you want a relationship that much. Unfortunately, I don't think Reiji has any intention of doing something like that. Thirdly, we have Ruka. Honestly, I really don't hate Ruka, despite what a lot of the guys in the Reddit comments are saying, because I don't care about their opinions. Ruka is great, and she holds a rifle, which is badass. That's a K2 rifle, guys. Looking at it, I think that's a K2 rifle, which is a Korean rifle, by the way. I think it looks like a K2. It has to be. Home country represent! Woo! No? No? Okay, then. Anyhow, I personally like Ruka with Kazuya the most. I don't like her enough to want her to not date Kazuya, yet she's not so awful that I think she's immediately disqualified from every single relationship there is. Plus, she looks like Subaru from Hollow Light. That's gotta count for something. Uh, honestly, I, I gotta say my f favorite uh, Ruka moment was probably when she initiated a verbal beatdown of Mammy in that one episode, so... Yeah, that's great. Still, Ruka does represent what everyone hates about this anime. It's called Stop Simping, Kazuya. You have what you want. There's a cute girl who wants to get with you. Look here, you spineless virgin. There's a ravishing young lady begging to smash you. Kazuya, are you seriously gonna let go what you have dis repeatedly called the ideal girl? Kazuya, you fucking moron! Fourth, we have Mammy. And this is the big one. Because Mammy is absolutely fantastic. You know, back in season one, I used to hate Mammy. I mean, like, I think we all did. And I'm sure most of you continue to hate her, too. Well, I don't. Here's the thing. Mammy is the one character in the show moving what little plot there is forward. Mammy is the instigator of chaos. Mammy creates conflict where there is none. Mammy is the girl who gets shit done. She's the member of the audience, right? Who got bored and decided to fuck with the characters and the story. Well, alright. Mammy's much more of a psychopath than... Than that, and I, I, I don't think like anyone except for the most creative and determined of audience members would go this far, but I digress. Mammy is a fucking bitch, and that is why I love her. I'm not gonna say, uh, I'm not gonna go like to like what Giguk said and say, you know, like she's actually a great person, but I definitely do think that Mammy is the best character in the show. Well, actually, no, there's one more Sumi! God, I love this girl. Definitely the one person in the show that I've consistently enjoyed both as a character and as a person. Like, okay, I, I know, I know, I'm a Dondori connoisseur, so yeah, maybe there's a bit of bias when I say this, but Sumi is absolutely amazing. She does not deserve to be in a show of this caliber. She's just so fucking cute! Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, what the hell was that? Am I turning into Kazuya? Damn, that's bad. Uh, anyways, Sumi is legitimately a good character. Not just because she's a cute waifu, not just because she's likable, though she is both of these, yes, but she, because she's got this cool thing called character development. Yes, character development, something so crucially missing in this godforsaken show. Speaking of which, uh, Sumi is apparently a history brainiac, just like best girl Miku, and by that extent, uh, me, I am also a... History reading. Like, what can I say? Don Deary historian waifus are always the best girls. I'm honestly inclined to say that we should all forget about Rent a Girlfriend and just make a new series about Sumi instead, but the author is already doing that, so well, at least that looks alright. Seriously though, Sumi is fucking awesome. She legit brings out the best in Kazuya, and in the episodes where she is the central character, Kazuya is actually well, he's actually an alright human. I alright, he does oogle Sumi a little bit. I mean, heck, one of the fr I think that's one of the first things he does to Sumi in uh, season fucking one, but come on, that's fairly par for the course. The real problem I have is this moment. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. God. I mean, I get it. Sumi has only seen the good side of Kazuya, and I mean like she's only really around to see him best. You remember how I said that Sumi brings out the best in Kazuya? This also means that she doesn't get to see the worst sides of him. But come on Sumi, you could do better than Kazuya. Seriously. All the complaints aside though, Sumi unironically does make the show better. She's the opposite of Manny, who makes the show better in an ironic way. Sumi does it unironically, which I think is a... Uh... I think that's pretty impressive. Whereas the introduction of Mammy turns this cringe-worthy car crash into a glorious train wreck. 
Sumi actually turns it into a semi-decent story. I already mentioned how Sumi's kind of the only character with an actual character arc, but she also does actually get me to care about the other characters to a degree. I'm serious here when I say I did not give a shit about Mizuhara or her grandma for most of the anime, and it was episode 11 that actually got me to, like, sort of begin to care. Alright, there's episode 12, which unveiled the full backstory and got me semi-invested, but before episode 11, I did not give a single flying crap. Episode 11 got me to not hate Kazuya as much as it showed him as an actual person. Again, fish facts! As a proud fish owner myself, I must say I do like fish. And as a human being, I like humans, just people that are passionate about things. Kazuya liking fish facts and having that be a thing during Kusumi's date actually humanizes the guy for me, as it shows that his personality isn't just simp. Now, there are other characters in the show, yes, most of whom are all completely fairly irrelevant. You have Kazuya's friends, who are cringe as fuck. Honestly, I feel like they evade the radar because they barely ever appear, but I'm going to be completely honest here. Kazuya is a chad compared to these fuckers. Look at that one episode where Kazuya just drinks and drinks and drinks. You know, that that's the episode that sold me on the idea that this is basically a poorly written soap opera. I mean, look at him. Kazuya, at least he's manning up and taking it for Mizuhara, even if he was going a bit, uh, overboard. Uh... ANOTHER CHARACTER! You have Kazuya's gra grandma, who I honestly used to like back in season 1, but the more I watch the show, the more I realize she's toxic as fuck. Seriously, she feels like a lesbian who suppressed her sexuality for her entire life and is now vicariously living her ideal, you know, partner through Kazuya. I mean, giving a ring to Mizuhara, are you insane? There's also Mizuhara's grandma, who I like, not necessarily because she has character, but because she just exists and seems to be a good person. Yeah, that's it. And then there's a fish, who we all know is the best character in the story, but I digress. So, now I've said just about everything that can be said of Rent a Girlfriend. Nothing more here, right? Actually, wrong. There is something I actually realized, something I noticed as I watched this show. Something that got me to say, hey, wait a minute. I was watching clips from the show called Mirai Niki, that is, you know, future diary for people who aren't weeaboos, and you see, the main character is an insufferable little shit. Fuck this dude. There's this dude named Yuki who is the biggest bitch I've seen in all of anime. Seriously, fuck this guy. This, th this caught me thinking about bad protagonists in general, and how they tend to absolutely fuck up the animes they tend to appear in. And that's when it got me, I had an epiphany. I'm not gonna say that Rent a Girlfriend is a good anime at all. It's shit and the manga is shit too. But upon realizing this event, which I will get to in a moment, I recognized a noticeable split in the treatment of the flawed but well-written protagonists, or, you know, Natsuki Subaru from ReZero, and shitty protagonists, whoever the fuck that guy was from Gothic or Kakeguru, or however, the f however you pronounce this. Now, I'm not gonna say that Kazuya is well-written by any means, nor am I saying Reiji is a good writer. Like, holy fuck, Reiji, what are you doing, man? You've got some, uh, you've got some issues. Honestly, I'm not gonna hop onto that train at this point because it's just such a well-worn topic that I don't feel like it'll be fun for me to talk about anymore. What I want to say is that Kazuya is unique. And even if the story is shoddily done, and by shoddily done, I mean like, what, 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 what story is there here? There's one thing I have to praise for it in the writing department, it's that Kazuya's behavior is treated as a bad thing that has to be overcome. It's not really played for comedy or shown to the side as some funny quirk, some personality trait, but as an obstacle. Alright, well, that's, that's not really true. It, it is played for comedy, it's shown to the side as a funny quirk, some personality trait, and it is treated like an obstacle. And yes, with all that being said, it still rewards Kazuya for his horrendous behavior, but then again, if you really think about it, what anime doesn't? I mean, it's actually starting to remind me of the hate for SAO a bit at this point. Yeah, yeah, because SAO, Sword Art Online, is a, is a pretty bad show, but it's nowhere near the worst. And Rent a Girlfriend is awful, but no one ever talks about the other awful shows out there. Admittedly, it is because of the fact that Rent a Girlfriend it is, really pop is really, really popular, but Come on, I'm not saying we should stop shitting on this show, I'm saying that we should, you know, spread the hate a little. There are other shows out there that are just as bad. The thing is, I noticed that there are two, like, types of hate against this show. First of the type comes from the manga readers. Basically, they complain how nothing has happened in the manga for a few hundred chapters now, and what little character progression has happened, well, just simply dissipated. And of course, there's also chapter 218, but I won't talk about that because I'm not talking about the manga. 
The problem with the anime viewers is that they noticed that all the manga readers were revolting and they just decided to jump on the bandwagon. They just looked at the show and said, ew, cringe after getting, you know, swept up in all the emotion. And since 218 came out before season 2 and public opinion was turning against the series, you could guess what happened. Now, mind you, the same people claimed it to be the best show of the season back when it was airing. I mean, again, I can't really blame them to be entirely honest because, as I said, I need to take a break when, while watching this show. Because whenever some, something like really cringy happens on screen, I just need to like pause the show, step outside, and just think about what the hell did I just watch? Even then, yeah, it does kind of seem a bit like mindless bashing. Especially when people did like a full 180 from their old opinions on, on this show. Like, this is just hypocrisy. Like, come on. Because love him or hate him, Kazuya actually has some things going for him, writing-wise. I'm actually kind of sad that the bar for anime writing is this low, but again, I digress. He's a, first off, he's a college student, something we never see in anime. He actually also has a legitimate justification for getting all the waifus. Yeah, believe it or not, Kazuya actually has a legitimately better justification for getting all the waifus than a lot of other animes. Alright, because let's actually look at all the reasons everyone's still going out with Kazuya here, right? Mizuhara is basically forced by her obligations. I admit this is kind of a stupid reason as well, because she's the one that kind of brought it upon herself, but I digress. Mizuhara sort of has a reason for continuing to go out with Kazuya, at the very least. Sumi, on the other hand, only really sees the good side of him. Like, Kazuya's always, I don't want to say he's on his best behavior. He's only showing the good side of him unintentionally, like completely subconsciously. Mami, uh, spoiler alert if you care, which you probably don't, went out with Kazuya on a dare and now she hates him. Also the fact that she's a sociopath who enjoys torturing people, but yeah, whatever. Ruka's the only one who actually has an asshole explanation as to why Kazuya likes him, but here's the thing. That's a good 75% of the four girls. 75% of the girls actually in the show actually have a legitimate reason for liking Kazuya. Four of the girls have an actual explanation for why they are with such an absolute turd. Alright, listen, my undying hatred of bland, weak, or just stupid anime protagonists is honestly best reserved for a different video, but what I'm trying to say here is that we need to take a more critical view of the writing in Kazuya and compare it to the other shitty protagonists. Criticizing Kazuya for being poorly written is a very legitimate and accurate statement. With all that being said, I do feel like he's being unfairly targeted because he's unique. The other harem protagonists, the other anime protagonists, are just as bad, and I feel like all this just gets overviewed because y'all are distracted. Again, this says more about the absolute state of anime, but mind you, love it or hate it, Kazuya is a unique character whose creation actually appears to have some thought put into it, unlike the other copy-paste fucks of protagonists seen in other shows. Maybe that's for the worse, but again, I digress. I'm gonna be honest with you, guess what? As the anime progressed, those unique traits, the fact that he is a simp, the fact that he is cringe, and the fact that he is just a complete idiot kinda grew on me. I'm not saying I like this guy by any means, but I'm saying I found it entertaining. Because here's the thing, bland anime protagonists who get everything infuriate me. Kazuya does not get everything. He goes through misfortune. He goes through bad stuff. A lot of bad things happen to him. And when those bad things happen to him, I don't know if I'm just a bad person, but it makes me happy, you know? You know earlier I said I liked Mammy? It's, it's the same deal here. It's like watching a train crash. And oh boy, do I love looking at train crashes. No one take that out of context. You know, honestly, I will be completely honest here. The true chads of this show aren't the people who watch the show or read the manga. They're the people who don't know anything about the manga, but enter the discussions anyway, just to shit on this show. Yeah, I, seriously, I've seen a lot of people in the actual Rent-A-Girlfriend fandom, and they told me they enjoy shitting on the show more than the they enjoy the actual show. So yeah, I feel like that's quite a lot of people at this point. Oh, uh, this is where you want to shift gears and talk about something new though, because I kind of want to ask, have any of you ever heard about the phrase, the death of the author. No, no, it has nothing to do with the author dying. Reiji may be slowly losing his sanity, but I sure as hope it doesn't harm him. He's a shit writer, but honestly, to be honest, his art is pretty good. I especially think the design of Mammy was aesthetically pleasing, but I digress. It'd honestly be a real shame if anything happened to him. Besides, we can't get any more of this gar garbage, which is just a shame because the garbage is fun to look at. You know, we really need to rent a girlfriend a bridge series. I can't believe, seriously, look it up. There is no like proper rent a girlfriend a bridge series. This is a prime show for parody material. Like, 
Guys, has no one thought of this yet? Anyhow, what the death of the author really represents is, well, when the what the author wants to portray and what the audience see are completely different. Uh, for example, Attack on Titan is a show, we all know, that is against racism and against genocide. Despite this, many people in the audience watch the show and go, alright, genocide good and racism good. This is more so due to the inherent flaws in the writing of Attack on Titan, though, in all honesty, so, so I digress. But yeah, but the death of the author is basically the dissonance between how the author writes his or her story versus the interpretation by the audience. You get what I'm looking at. What I'm saying here is that Rent a Girlfriend should be interpreted as a rebellion. A satirical show that makes fun of every single goddamn cringy harm protagonist by putting forth its own goddamn cringy protagonist and saying, Yeah, this is the average harm protagonist. You want to watch this junk? Yeah, yeah, I know. Reiji is clearly not original or motivated enough to write something that good. But that is where we, the audience, must step in. This is how we should interpret Rent a Girlfriend. It is a rebellion, a satire, to destroy every last horror anime. Because, I mean, like, alright, barring a few good exceptions, let's be honest here, 99% of all harms have, like, mostly been trash. And it is time, my friends, for this show, this revolutionary show, to destroy the harem genre once and for all. And that, my friends, is what Rent a Girlfriend is. I'm kidding. Fuck the show. Fuck the manga. Fuck everything about it. Zero out of ten worst show I've ever seen. Uh, and yeah. See you all in season three.